Hi there, it's Dana. I'm going to give you the setup video. This is a setup video of the Chanel small notebook agenda cover that I have. And I have decided to use this as a journal because, as a portable journal to take with me all the time because I did have the the Coach Bramble Rose agenda but as my journal for home, but I realized that I wanted to have something to write with all the time and it would be a little bit frustrating to have ideas and not be able to write it down right away. So so that is why I needed this guy. And it is, uh, as far as dimensions, it is a three and a half wide by five and a half tall. So it's about the size of field notes, small field notes or the pocket note moleskin agenda. And yeah, so I've mentioned that I'm using it as a Midori style. And the theme of this book is that it is Kind of it's pretty much laid out like a book so you'll see what i mean inside and it is its main function is my journal and that is one its only purpose so on the inside when you open it the i yeah you'll see that this this falls out this is actually the my bookmark that i created so so i have two bookmarks that i'll i'll talk about in a second and on the inside covers i don't really put anything in here other than the original paperwork it came with so i just leave that in there um maybe i'm planning on getting a an instax share um printer so that i could probably put polaroids in here but um for now it's just pretty simple and i have on the i have four booklets inside and these are all actually made by me uh, so I am going to be DIYing all of the books and hand hand making them myself. So I use so the paper that I will be using on the outside is just um, is just I believe 65 65 pound or 60 pound cardstock paper, and then I just print out whatever title it is, and then the inside is Rhodia dot pa dot graph paper. So right here, this is the this is a Chanel bookmark which is the same flower as the front cover so it looks like let's see if I could get that for you guys it has a logo right there yeah so so I just decided to get this bookmark to add a little bit of um, a lot of, to add a little bit to the to the notebooks because all of these notebooks pretty much are just plain white paper with just the title so here this is going to be the preface which is where i will be writing the if if whoever finds this will have information on where to return it and then also the purpose of the book and then any other miscellaneous information that i want to put as well so that's that and then the the covers are pretty plain and on the back side i or uh, the second book that i have is the net memoir so I decided to call it a memoir because, um, let's see, I was doing research on trying to figure out what to call it. I was either thinking about calling the book series as my journal series as either an autobiography or uh, notes or diary or journal. But I settled on memoir because uh, what I found was that there was a comparison between um, memoir and an autobiography because a memoir is technically pre is a type of autobiography. But the comparison they made was that um, an in an autobiography, you write about a story of a life, and then a memoir, you write a s about a story from a life. So I thought that was pretty interesting, and that's where that's where I decided to choose it to be called memoir. And let me see if I have my other one. No, I don't have it. So um, after I finish this one, this has this has around forty pages each. And um, after I finish this one, I will be able to to slip it out and switch it with the other one, which will start at number two. So that's how I'm doing my whole journaling series. And this way, it's really like the dot pad is really nice. This is supposed to be the table of contents area, but I have yet to fill it out. So it has um, it has just like my writing. So I have I write a lot every day, and these ones right now are the titles that I'm going to be uh, putting in the title section. So in the table of contents area, but yes, for now this is just like a quick flip through of what it will be, and later on I'll have a a full on walkthrough, like a flip through of the actual more completed journal. So and this one is going to be a gratitude journal. I decided uh, I did have a gratitude section in my in my uh, main planner, but now that I've kind of moved over to the pocket agendas, I don't really use um, I don't really use a large planner anymore. So the gratitude. The gratitude journal is just to write down a few lines of things I was 
grateful for that day. And and right now, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's just like doing the date and then whatever day it was for that month and then just writing a line of stuff, well, a few lines of stuff. So that is, I, I, I thought it would be nice to add it into the, the whole journal aspect because it's just something for me to reflect on throughout the day. And then after that, I have a booklet for etiquette. And I thought this was um, something that would be important because I kind of like to, or at least now that I'm in, um, kind of like working more and then be invited out to um, dinners and stuff, it's good to have nice etiquette and just having this as a reference to make sure that, um, that I'm kind of on point with how to act around specific, like say a formal event. So this is just like, um, it's just like a reference booklet. So it has some dining etiquette stuff and then I'll have like more things that I'll add later on like say letter writing etiquette or concert hall etiquette something like that because I so yeah and I remember like this would have been nice to have when I was say in undergrad when I was like in a sorority because we did do etiquette lessons so this was something that kind of that I thought was pretty valuable and carrying out from that from that part of my life way back when <laughs> so yeah so, so far that is it. It does hold four notebooks comfortably. I do have the bookmarks as a placeholder for for my journal as well as the gratitude, the gratitude journal. And then the setup for it is a, is, um, let's see, it's a flyleaf that I created myself. So I, let me see if I can take this out without ruining it. So when I take it out, it pretty much looks like this. So underneath it has the hooks for the original agenda. If I were to use the ring agenda or the spiral agenda, but this this is the flyleaf that I created, and it's made. I actually made it from the from a moleskin pocket, and I just cut it out down to size and put the elastics through. So I have two elastics running down, and it's able to hold four books comfortably and I could actually probably hold six books if I really wanted to but but right now the size of this these amount of books is pretty good for the for the Chanel so it's so it's working out for me and I kind of like the setup for now and I like that it feels like I'm writing a story about my life when I open this up so or a memoir about my life either way <laughs> or I could just imagine that I'm writing like my own fairy tale so so yeah this is just like a quick uh pretty much the whole of the agenda sorry i'm like having it's hard to film and put this back in at the same time oh and it yeah so when it goes in i don't have to do like a full fly leaf because you don't really need to uh just enough to fit within the sleeves because it doesn't really move around that much and then yeah sorry i'm struggling a bit and then yeah, you just slip it in right there and then you got all your books. So I could also demonstrate how it works to set it up. So let me take out the ribbon. And then take out this set of books. And the other set of books. And then you'll kind of get an idea of what it looks like when it's empty with just the fly leaf inserted. And then I'll also take off the book so that you kind of get an idea of how the whole process works with setting it up as a Midori style notebook. Okay, so this is it with just the fly leaf inside. It has two sets of elastics running through. So that is just the base of it. And then when I want to put in two books at one time, I will get the first two books and connect them by the spines with one elastic, or by the center of the book with one elastic. So this is one elastic. And I usually put the the knotted side in whichever book that I don't use often but it's just like it doesn't bother me some people might prefer not to have not to see the um, rip the knot at all 
And then after that, I just kind of like pull it like this. And when you have that step, you can slip it underneath the one of the elastics. So I'll slip it under the first elastic. And, and there you go. You have two books. So I could, if I really just wanted to do that, I could just comfortably just use two books this way. Or also just put one one book in each of these elastics that are on the flyleaf. And then for to add the last two books, you do the same thing and add the elastics as well. Down the middle one after you find the center of the booklet. And then fix it so that it's it's holding on evenly. And then add it to the second elastic on the flyleaf. And there you go. So those are the two books together. Sometimes you just have to fix it to make sure that the elastics are in the middle. And then for adding the bookmark, I just slip this bookmark, which is around a little bit over a foot long. And it's just a ribbon that, it's a silk ribbon that you could probably just buy at Walmart or Target for a dollar or Joann's and Michael's. And then I just slip it behind all of these booklets because it will it will catch inside the where the elastics are are held together with the fly leaf. So I just center this and when it's it's centered enough I can place it in. So sometimes I make this side a little bit longer just so that it can that way I can tuck it in later on and I'll show you what I mean so I'll just put it in the gratitude and whatever last page I wrote on for my journal and close those down and when I do want to a lot of times I like to tuck it in so see this is too short so sometimes you just have to adjust the bookmarks a little bit to get the right length that you need so that it can have enough ribbon to stay, to tuck underneath the cover. So there you go. And then a lot of times I just tuck it right there. I can close it like that and then you're good to go. So, so there you go with the bookmark all set. And then other than that, with so that is the whole setup of the Midori style and as well as adding a bookmark. Other than that, I do have a pen holder for that kind of matches with the Chanel style because it's um, it has a quilted kind of faux leather look. This is actually not real leather, but I got it off of Amazon or eBay to hold my cross pen that I use for my journal. So, so this is the pen holder. And this is the pen that I use, which is the Cross Century Classic Fountain Pen. I use, um, it is a, it, it is a fine nib. I don't know if I'll catch that. But yes, it's the fine nib. So it's around, it's probably like around half an inch or 0.5 millimeter um, in writing. So this is what it looks like. Oops, that was terrible. <laughs> and I also do write with a special fountain pen ink. Sorry. So that's what it looks like. It's not too, it's not too thick, but it's not the, like the finest, which is fine with me. I like the size of the, I like the, I like the, um, size of the ink that it comes out. And the ink that I use, I actually use two inks for this journal, which is, this is the first one I'm using right now, which is from J. Urban, which is a Rouge Bourgoin. I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. Uh, but yes, this is the one that I originally got and I'm trying to finish because I found this at a pen store in, 
in Berkeley when I was visiting Northern California and I really liked it. This place is called Castle in the Sky. It's in one of the art districts but they specialize in a lot of fountain pens and that's where I fell in love and I really wanted to get this ink which is a scented rose ink and it smells like roses but they didn't have it at the time so I just bought this anyway to support them because they're a small business. But yes, this one is my my signature ink because it's a very nice red color and red rose color and it's it smells like roses so so these are the two inks that I use and when I finish this this will become my permanent one and hopefully when as I continue writing in the Chanel it will start smelling like roses so that is pretty much it for what I'm doing with my with my Chanel agenda and as a journal and as a Midori style so hopefully this is helpful to you, kind of inspiring as well, coming from, um, since considering how this is a little bit different, I know I I don't really see um, a lot of um, planner agenda users going like the fountain pen route or going with heavy uh, specialty Clairefontaine paper, which by the way, this is, this is Rhodia dot pad paper, which uses Clairefontaine paper, I believe. So this is what the lines look like. This is what the page looks like. And it's pretty high quality paper and it's it's the standard for fountain pens and dip pens but I did use I did do some samples with this pen this paper and this pen but this was for this was for the scented rose ink and it did do a little bit of bleeding on the back which isn't too noticeable but that was because I was using my quilt pen which is a dip pen which looks like this so sometimes I do write with this pen when I'm at home just because uh, I kind of want to practice and use it. So this is my other pen that I use at home. And then this is what the bottle looks like, which is, it has a quill pen holder. So, so yeah, that is an overview of all this. That's pretty much all the stuff that I'm doing with this agenda. And yeah, I hope it was pretty helpful and uh, informative and hopefully it will inspire you as well to maybe consider going into fine writing instruments or or maybe making your own or going the Midori route. So yeah, thanks for watching and if you have any questions let me know or follow me on Instagram and hopefully I'll talk to you soon and see you on any of the planner community uh, Facebook groups online. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.